Hello and welcome back to Rust Electricity for Beginners. My name is Ozzy and in this episode we're going to talk about some simple circuits you can make with a door controller. Now I don't normally mess with door controllers while I'm still in my starter base, but it is useful information to have if you're constantly getting door camped. All of the components we're going to use are available in the tier 1 workbench. We're going to use the door controller, timer, button, door switch, electrical branch, and the pressure pad. I'll also have a picture of some of the circuits at the end of the video, as well as a link in the description to the circuit on Restrition. So first I'm going to grab a door controller and a button. And the nice thing about the button is there's a simple one we can do where we don't even access any of the power from our electrical circuit. It is possible to put the door controller on the opposite side of the door, so make sure it's on the side that you want it on. And as a reminder, the way the button works is it'll generate two power on its own without being plugged into anything. If you do plug it in, it'll push the power through that is available, but we don't need that for this one. Um, we just need that two power it generates on its own. On the door controller, we have the power in, pass through, open, and close nodes. We're only using the power in nodes this time, but the open and close will let you, if it's already powered, let you send a signal that tells it whether to open or close and the pass through is if it already has power send any additional available power through to the next component you have plugged in for this circuit we're just going to plug the power in and the power out of the button pressing the button opens the door for a brief moment and then it closes it automatically this is great if i just want to run out here and not expose myself by turning around and closing the door or having to worry about it if i just don't feel like spending the effort and if I want to make this longer to give myself some more time, I can add a timer. As a reminder, the way the timer works is whenever there is power in and the timer is active, it'll send that power through the power out node on the top. I can set this for whatever time I like in seconds. I'm gonna set this one for three seconds. And that power in just needs to go to something providing power. Now it looks like everything in my circuit is pretty much used except for this light. But this light only turns on when, or only receives power whenever this switch is active and it's nighttime due to this daylight sensor. So I really don't want to use a door opener unless this switch is off and I want it to be available during the day. So this isn't going to help me much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to branch power off of my battery and my main power supply. So since that was currently sent, sending power to the switch, I'm going to re need to do a little bit of rewiring so that that switch still gets power. So I'm going to send the branch out from this branch to the switch. Oop, that is not what I wanted. So now that switch still has power. My heater is not turning on though, and I'm guessing there's not enough power for my light either. The heater takes three power, the light takes two, so I need to send five through this branch. There we have the heater turning back on, and I imagine if it's nighttime, the, uh, the lights will also turn on. So an important note now is the difference between active power, active usage, and allocated power. Right now the only active power out of this battery is three, which is coming from this heater but I have five allocated to the circuit with the heater and the light. So that means there's only 10 available in the power out of this branch. If you see the max output on this battery, the max output on this battery is 15. So I have allocated five of that 15 to the branch. So even though only three is being used, five of that power is no longer available to allocate to any other circuit. So this is kind of where you get into whether you need a small battery, a large battery, anything else like that. It's mostly for the output. If I constantly have five power coming out of this battery and I'm never gonna use any more, but I try and plug three or four more circuits in and allocate power to them, I might still not have power to those circuits because the max output has already been allocated, even if I'm not using the actual power from the battery. So I'm gonna put another branch here so that the next time I want to branch off I've got something here I can do and I don't have to do any rewiring. I'm going to take that power out from this branch, put it into the next branch, and I'm going to change this to 1 because it's all the power I'm going to need for my door closer. And I'm also going to tangent a little bit here. Please don't do this. 
Don't let your wires pass through the outside of your base if it's not necessary. Like if you've got a big compound or something, that might be different. But if someone can figure out where your power is going or coming from, they can avoid traps in your bases. They can, you know, do all sorts of things. If you want to draw pictures in your base on the ceiling or something, like that's fine. Just don't let it be outside your base unless you're trying to deceive someone like that's different. All right. So the red light means there is power going into this timer, but it's not active. The green light means that the timer is active and has power. We can activate the timer using the node on the side, such as if we wanted to do a button from somewhere else in the base or something, but we don't need that for this one because we can just activate it manually. So we set this timer for three seconds. It'll now open that door for three seconds for us which gives us a little bit more time if we maybe want to peek out and see before we run out and that door will still close. You can set this for 10 seconds, 15, 50, whatever you need it for whatever. This will also be useful later if you decide to do base defense with automatic doors and turrets. Now one other thing is we can have both of these available at the same time if we run them through an OR switch. So if we take an OR switch and we plug in both the timer and the button to these nodes on the bottom. The switch will basically say whichever one is active will pass through, have a green light, and pass power through the OR switch. If they're both active at the same time, it takes whichever power is greater. So I can plug this OR switch into the door controller, and when the button is active, it'll be a short opening. When the timer is active, it'll be a little bit longer, whatever I've set it to. And if they're both active at the same time, what you'll find is because the button produces two power and we only have one power coming out of the timer, it'll pull power from the button first. And when that button deactivates, it'll pull one power from the timer. If I were to send six power into the timer and they were both active, it would essentially ignore the button. You can also, if both of them are active, let's say you do the button first and then the timer, the door will stay open for however long the timer is set for because it was an unbroken amount of power to the door closer. Another cool thing you can do with door closers is hook them up to pressure pads because they produce their own power. This is great for if you've got a garage door that you want to be able to roll over with a vehicle and have the door open for a brief moment just enough to get the vehicle in. The pressure pad produces one power on its own Another thing about door closers is if they're already open, say I manually open this door, they essentially close the door whenever they stop receiving power. So if I activate the timer and it's receiving power, it's as if it's opening the door even though it's already open, and then it closes once it stops receiving power. So if I open this door again, and then I walk over the pressure pad, it'll close on its own. Now I don't recommend doing this for your main base. It gives raiders and people not authed on your TC a lot of more access to your base past your doors and such. Um, but it can be useful for trap bases and such like that. Anyway, that's all for this episode. If it helped you out any, please hit that like button. It really supports the channel. If you want to see more episodes like this in the future, please hit subscribe. If you have any comments or questions for me, put them down below. And I will see you all next time.